going to make this easier. I will be releasing a new video every week announcing the new openings in all of Southeast Asia to allow travelers one source for new information. So please subscribe, turn on notifications to stay informed. I'm not going to get into the logistics of what will happen as these countries open right now, but we will keep you informed. My heart goes out to the generous citizens of these countries that have provided us with wonderful vacations we have all enjoyed. My hope is we get to see them very soon. Now let's see what's happening in these countries as of today. Let's start with Thailand. Thailand is the first country to launch a program beginning July 1st called the Phuket Sandbox. This program will allow international tourists to transit through Bangkok to Phuket where they'll have to stay for one week at their hotel, undergo a rapid test at the end of the week, and if it's negative, they can travel anywhere in Thailand. This action by the Thai government has spurned a ripple effect in Southeast Asia. The situation in Thailand continues to evolve almost on a daily basis. They had suggested a five-day quarantine, then today it's seven-day quarantine. We will keep you informed on this channel as changes occur as quick as possible. So start packing, looks like we might be able to travel. Now for the Philippines. The Philippine government has announced a new program called the Green Lane. The Green Lane program will allow fully vaccinated Filipinos to travel from outside their country to inside their country. The vaccination must have taken place in the Philippines for this to be valid. As soon as this was announced, it caused a bit of a tourism industry uproar, complaining that this made little sense. The government responded by saying at present, there's no international vaccine passport or certificate. As a result of this, the government of the Philippines has no way to verify the authenticity of documents provided the government has stated that the first fully vaccinated international tourists that will be allowed into the Philippines will be from countries that will allow the Philippine Tourism Bureau and Immigration Departments to have access to their vaccination database for verification. To me, this seems like a non-starter. However, this does signal the beginning of reopening strategy. The government has said that it is the first step in reopening the country to tourism and that they know how necessary it is that it begins as soon as possible since countries such as Thailand are already opening the major tourist destinations like Phuket. Let's move on to Indonesia. Specifically, we'll start with the island of Bali. The government has announced a July 1st opening that they were working towards to get above the 70% vaccinated requirement for their citizens to allow international tourists to come and visit. There has been a multitude of changes suggested, but as of today, it seems the rollout will occur as follows and the vaccinations are on target. Indonesia plans to reopen borders July 1st, 2021, with destinations including Bali, Batam, Bintan, and on the island of Bali, Ubud, Nusa Dua, and Sunur will be areas that you can visit. Serving as locomotive regions to kickstart tourism, said the country's president, Joko Widodo. In preparation, the government has carried out a widespread vaccination program for targeted groups, including the tourism workforce. Safety and Environmental Sustainability, or CHSE, certification program throughout the tourism sector in Indonesia. Details are still to follow, with Indonesia most likely to follow the template laid down by Thailand in their Phuket sandbox reopening. Stay tuned for more details as there are announced changes that seem to be occurring almost daily. You might want to press pause right now and just take a look at this table. It'll provide you a snapshot of it, a very general information on Southeast Asia that uh, I think would be helpful. Now for Vietnam. The government of Vietnam has announced the opening of Hoi An to South Korean tourists. However, all rules and regulations are in flux right now because of a new variant that has surfaced in Hanoi. Vietnam has not vaccinated many citizens. They had been phenomenally successful in keeping out COVID from their country. As of today, they only have recorded 47 deaths. The recent success of their fight against COVID to date may have lured the government of Vietnam into a false sense of security. The recent outbreak in Hanoi has caused grave concern for the government. They have announced that they are going to test everyone in Hanoi as a first measure. So stay tuned, we will announce changes as they occur on the Rusty Traveler. Now to Cambodia. To travel to Cambodia, 
you will require a visa and this must be arranged before arrival as the government has suspended the e-visa and visa on arrival programs. Cambodian embassies are only accepting applications for diplomatic, official and sponsored business linked visas and are not issuing tourists or other visas to enter Cambodia. Contact your local Cambodian embassy for more information. All arriving foreigners must fully abide by locally enforced quarantine measures for 14 days at a hotel designated by the government of Cambodia. Pay a deposit of $2,000 upon arrival at airports for mandatory COVID-19 testing and potential treatment services. The money will be used to pay for an accommodation during the quarantine, testing and transportation from an airport to a hotel. They must possess a COVID-19 negative medical certificate issued no more than 72 hours prior to the date of arrival issued by competent and licensed health authority of their residing country. At this time, it appears that this is required regardless of vaccine status. Pre-purchase of local health insurance packages for COVID-19 treatment from Forte Insurance Company. The cost is $90 for a $50,000 policy, valid for 20 days. Undergo a COVID-19 test upon arrival and wait in official facilities designated hotels to receive laboratory results. Health authorities will then oversee another COVID-19 test on the 13th day of the quarantine. As of this date, it looks as though Cambodia is way off in allowing international travelers' tourism into their country. But stay tuned, we have hope. Cambodia has been extraordinarily successful in controlling the outbreak of COVID-19. I'm sure they will proceed with caution as per guidelines by their own Department of Immigration and Tourism Health and Safety and keeping an eye on what other Asian countries around them are doing. The thing to remember is all these countries have different governing systems and different geography, so it can never be one size fits all right now. And now for Laos. Officials have extended existing coverage restrictions through June the 4th. Nationwide measures remain in effect. Gatherings may occur with protocols such as a 10% cap on attendance and one meter distancing between each participant. Tourism sites and casinos are closed. Tourist visas on arrival and standing visa exemptions remain suspended. All entry requires prior permission from the nearest Lao diplomatic mission at least seven days before arrival. Approved foreign travelers such as diplomats, officials, central workers, technical experts and tourists from locations with low COVID-19 activity may enter Laos. The government requires international travel arrivals to produce negative COVID-19 tests obtained within 72 hours before the trip and have insurance coverage for COVID-19 treatment and other related expenses. Travelers can obtain insurance coverage from international or local providers. Additionally, arrivals will undergo paid testing upon entry and a 14-day quarantine at designated facilities. Land border restrictions remain in place. Foreign nationals leaving Laos have to notify their country's embassy in Laos to get permission from the local authorities on their behalf. Passengers departing Laos must obtain a negative test for COVID-19 within 72 hours before they leave. Flights are mostly limited to emergencies and reparation. Authorities have banned charter flights from locations with ongoing COVID-19 outbreaks. International flights are limited to emergencies and reparation. To sum it up, the situation in Laos unfortunately looks like opening is not on the horizon. They will follow their neighbors in reopening since their borders are very porous in regard to Vietnam, Thailand and Cambodia. Now a brief note about China. With vaccinations and a decline in COVID-19 cases worldwide, China's efforts to control the pandemic may relax and Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics is upcoming. Optimistically, China may open its borders in early 2022. Singapore. At present, Singapore is allowing entry for nationals of certain countries. These corridors and travel bubbles change as the government monitors COVID. I would suggest going directly to the Singaporean government website for information. Singapore is rated as the number one country in the world in containing COVID. Malaysia. Travel restrictions are these. Tourist entry, partially allowed. Testing, negative COVID-19 test is required for all countries. Quarantine required, it depends. Quarantine details, 
quarantine for seven and ten days required for some travelers. Once again, I would suggest going directly to the Malaysian government website for information. Malaysia has instituted an overly complicated set of restrictions for travel. Many countries are included on a list and travel from these countries remains closed. This list is subject to change at any time. At present, I consider countries with complicated and changing rules as closed. You might find yourself about to leave only to see your ability to enter vanish. In closing, all these countries value their tourism industry highly and would like to expedite the return to normal for the sake of their citizens and the economies. We will be updating information on all these fascinating destinations as soon as it becomes available. I welcome comments and questions. Your help supporting this channel is truly appreciated. Thanks for watching The Rusty Traveler. We'll see you soon.